What's up guys, it's Gothic, aka Sam, and today we are doing another episode of Asagao Academy Normal Boots Club. We are on episode two. This is a free, that's right, I said free, dating game featuring the guys of the Normal Boots uh, YouTube channels. So we're going to jump right back into the story. Let's go. I settled into bed, eager to get started with my new reading material, but Mai was sitting at her desk carving a pencil idly into the pages of a notebook. Every few minutes, she released a long, drawn-out sigh as, if she, as she sigh as the lead of her pencil whined against the paper. I lowered my book and took the bait. Is something wrong, Mai? She let out another dreary sigh. I hope Jared notices me this year. Does Jared know you like him? Mai whirled around in feigned shock. What? I don't like Jared! Oh. I closed my book and set it aside, deciding to play along. Well. Have you at least tried talking to him? <laughs> no. I mean, I have before. Why don't you try again? She bobbed her head from side to side, considering this like it never crossed her mind before. Yeah, maybe I could do that. Satisfied, I picked my book back up. Have you ever had a boyfriend, Hannah? What? Huh? Me? No. Never. Really? Never? Hmm. Never. I bet you 10,000 yen that you meet a totally cute boy here and fall in love by the end of the school year. You're crazy. I buried my face back in my book, bearing my, barring my, barring, barring my from any further discussion. Fall in love by the end of the year? Me? If I were a betting kind of girl, I'd take that bet. I awoke the next morning with what felt like a lizard in my throat. Oh, I love that. Her humming theme. Mai was already up, shuffling through her school, books, school bag with an enigmatic grin. The first day of school. Hannah! You're finally awake! Her voice sliced through the air like a knife and I winced. She was definitely a morning person. It's time for the first day of school. Aren't you excited? I can't wait to see what's going to happen. What do you mean? Is something special going to happen today? <laughs> something strange always happens on the first day of school, especially to someone like you. She winked. What? Someone like me. Uh -huh. You know what I mean. She smiled and started messing with a pile of papers on her desk. Shaking my head, I got out of bed and pulled my uniform out of my closet. My palms sweat as I held the gold the gold vest and blue jacket. Was this really possible for things to be different here than they were at home? What if the problem wasn't actually the school? I shook the thoughts out of my head and changed it in my uniform. Oh, hmm, what is it? Mm. You look so cute. Really? He crept up my neck. Yeah. Completely, your hair matches your uniform so well. You look like a flower blooming straight out of the ground. <laughs> Thank you. Water stung the back of my eyes, and I turned to start packing my backpack. Why was I getting worked up over something as little as this? I must have gotten less sleep than I thought. Is something wrong? <laughs> no, nothing's wrong. I'm just happy. How dumb was that? I started crying. I started crying at the first. At the, bleh, bleh, blah, 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 blah. I started crying at the first sign of someone being nice to me. I took a deep breath to steady my nerves. What an oddly menacing laugh, thud. All the air left my lungs as something like the ho something like horse hooves slammed against my back. You'll do just fine. Don't worry. This is gonna be awesome. I stiffly peered over my shoulder. That, that was you? What? Huh? Mai stood behind me, her hand raised. Somehow she had the strength. Th 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 Words are hard today, guys. Somehow she had the strength of a bodybuilder. Nothing. I was just about to zip up my bag when I spotted the book Satch gave me lying on my nightstand. The Princess Betrothed. He said if I ever needed to be transported somewhere far away, I could take it with me. It was pretty good so far. Maybe it would be smart to bring it along, just in case I had no one to talk to between class periods. When I need it for my first day of class? I'm going to take it. I put it into my already overflowing bag, biting my lip. It never hurt to be prepared, right? You ready? Yeah. Let's go. Hee <laughs> hee. Stick with me and you'll be fine. 
Mai opened the door, and together we stepped into the hallway, merging into a steady stream of chattering girls and flute-flavored perfume. Oh my, my, I did not know we lived on the same floor! No way, really? That's awesome! We'll totally be able to catch up. Whatever happened between you and... The river of girls shifted as we headed down the stairs. Suddenly I found myself surrounded by a bunch of people I didn't know. Oh, wow, what a jerky turned out to be! Mai's exclamations faded into the buzz of voices in the air. Oh no. What would I do if we got separated? Anxiously, I searched the crowd for girls for Mai, but I couldn't find her. Everyone was dressed in the same Asago uniform. It was difficult to tell anyone apart, and being really short didn't help the situation. As we turned the last corner down by the stairwell, I saw a flash of red hair a little ways ahead of me. Mai? I reached between two girls and tapped her on the shoulder. Ha. Huh. Oh, um... Who... are you? The girl's eyes flashed, almost like a jolt of electricity shot through them. Um, I'm sorry, I thought you were someone else. She said nothing and turned away. Before I knew it, I stood outside of Primrose House watching the flow of girls disperse across campus. Mai was nowhere to be seen. I couldn't even hear her chirpy voice. Oh, man! I took a deep breath, biting my lip. This wasn't a big deal. I could go to class all alone. But I didn't even know where the building was. I reached into my backpack and dragged out my class schedule. Homeroom. 206 Poppy Hall? Which one was Poppy Hall? Weren't the classrooms on the other side of campus? I picked a direction and began to walk, trying to ignore my rising panic at the thought of be arriving late on the first day of class. I was a third year where no one knew me. All the people staring. You okay? You look a little lost. Someone called out to me, and I turned around, almost jumping for joy. When I froze. A normal boots jacket. He was part of the normal boots club. I could practically, practically feel my tongue swelling in my mouth. This was a normal boots club member. I had to make a good impression. He was one of the founders, right? And he must be John Tron. Yeah, I'm new. I don't know where Poppy Hall is. <laughs> you a freshman? No problem. My class is in Poppy Hall. I'll walk you there. Really? That would be wonderful. Thank you. Was this really happening? He began walking towards a large brick building with an enthusiastic manner, pumping his arms up and down like he was in some kind of show tune. I fell into step beside him. I didn't notice it when my pointed him out to me yesterday, but John Tron had big brown eyes and a warm-looking face. He was basically a human puppy. I glanced up at him out of the corner of my eye. Yep! A bird? A bird on his shoulder? Birds always made me really uncomfortable. Something about the ease in which they could poke out someone's eyes. Is something wrong? Why did you stop? No, nothing's wrong. He followed my gaze to the bird on his shoulder. Hey. Oh, this is Jacques. Isn't he cute? Nice to meet you. It... It spoke. <laughs> yeah. He put his hands on the jacket and Jacques jumped into his palm. Jacques is a robot bird, you see? Hello. Jacques' eyes gleamed a dangerous red when he spoke, but nothing else suggested he wasn't a normal bird. In fact, if I hadn't known better, I would have said the red in his eye was painted on. That's amazing! Jacques twitched his head to the side, examining me in return. The more he looked at me, the less afraid I was. What are you looking at? What? What? Nothing, I'm sorry. Oh yeah, Jacques can be a little sassy. Who are you calling sassy? I'm not the sassy one. I don't forget to feed you. Jacques, that was one time. I was alone and starving in the frozen tundra of the empty world. Loveless. Afraid. Ignore him. I'm bringing him with me to the drama club, and he's taken a bit too well to it. I see how it is. Shut me out like I have nothing to add to the conversation. Jacques retook his place on John's shoulder, this time facing away from us as if miffed. We resumed our walk towards Poppy Hall. I'm John Tron, by the way. Call me John. Hana, nice to meet you. Hana. That's a cute name. <sighs> Thank you. So how long have you had Jacques? Since middle school. We've been together for years now, ain't that right? I'm not listening. Yeah, well, I love him to death. I don't know what I'd do without him. It seemed like life would be a lot easier without him. Well, what was I? But who was I to say? We arrived at the brick building. A white sign surrounded by poppies declared it to be, unsurprisingly, Poppy Hall. Which room are you in? Room 206. Really? 
Yeah. That's my homeroom. We're in the same class. <laughs> John laughed and clasped me on the shoulder. Wonderful. I guess I'll be seeing more of you then, right? Yeah. Right. Together we entered Poppy Hall. Poppy Hall was lined with fluorescent lights and Asaga blue lockers. The lack of students milling around the hallway indicated we were a bit late. We ran up the stairs and made it into the classroom just as the bell rang. My heart caught in my throat. Thankfully, the teacher hadn't come yet. Instead, students were clumped into tight pods and milled around the classroom, catching up on vacation news. Thank you so much for showing me to class, John. See you later. No problem. I'll see you around. He waved and disappeared into the wriggling mass of students. I glanced around the room looking for an empty seat. Anna. I peeled herself out from behind a, cuffing, a cuddling couple. Was that Jontron? Were you just talking to Jontron? Yeah. My eyes widened, and I couldn't help feeling a little smug. I realized I didn't know the way to class after you and I got separated, and he offered to walk me. <laughs> Maya emitted a high-pressured squeal. John Tron walked you to class? Oh my gosh, you have to tell me everything! She grabbed me by the wrist and pulled me into an empty desk in the back corner of the room, right next to the window. I saved you a seat! I slid in and took off my backpack, looking in on the side of my desk. I was a bit worried that the books inside were a bit too heavy for the bag to handle, but so far it held up well. Sorry we got separated, by the way. It can get really chaotic sometimes. So tell me, what happened? What did he say? What did he smell like? Does he have peach fuzz? Is it rough? Wait, what? These are very important questions I'm asking. You need to answer them. Was his hair super silky, or did it have the roughness of a dog's coat? Before I could answer, the door to the front of the room slid open, and a tall woman strolled in. The class went quiet and obediently slid into their seats. My heart beat furiously, blood rushing to my ears. Class? Good morning, class. The teacher's melodious voice slammed through the room, coming the buzzing high of students back from break. My shoulders relaxed and my fear ebbed away. I am your teacher, Miss Shizuka Wakahaiza? Sure. You may call me Miss Shizuka. The emphasis she placed in the word led me to believe that calling her Ms. or Miss Mers, wasn't a mistake she would take lightly. Some of you might not have noticed that we have a new student this semester. A hail of murmurs passed through the class. Some people glanced at me. Nope, there was the fear again. Mm -hmm. Would you like to come up and introduce yourself? I nodded, stood, and slowly walked to the front of the room, counting my steps to make sure I wouldn't fall. I faced the class, took a deep breath, and introduced myself. And I noticed a familiar face in the crowd. There was John, sitting with two other boys, wearing normal boots, club jackets. One of the boys, the tallest one, was staring at me, the barest of frowns on his face. Something about him seemed really familiar. Wait. He was PBG, wasn't he? The other founder of the Normal Boots Club. Suddenly, all the strength left my knees. What should I do? Why was he frowning? Was it possible I had already made a bad impression on him? You had to be kidding me. If he didn't like me, what would that mean about everyone else? Would they try to follow his lead? I swallowed. The faces of the class began to congeal, forming one giant blob. You moved from Amarisu, right? I nodded and swallowed again. Then, like a beacon of light, I noticed my smiling and gave me a thumbs up. That's right. What would my do in this situation? Yes, I just moved here. My name is Hana Mizuno. I transferred from Ameririsu Public High School. I'm really excited to be here. I hope you'll all take good care of me from now on. I bowed my head to the class and they clapped politely. When I looked up, PBG wasn't frowning, but he still seemed oddly confused. Maybe he always looked like that. <laughs> Thank you. You may be seated. I returned to my seat, heaving a small sigh. The hardest part of the day was over. Shizuka began talking about standard procedure for the semester, the rules for classes, when homework was due, and that sort of thing. It was all very similar to my old school, and I spaced out in spite of myself. A brief flicker of movement caught my eye. PBG, again? I glanced at him, and his friend snapped back to the blackboard. That sentence didn't make sense. What was his problem? Class continued on like that until finally the bell rang and it was time for lunch. Mai stretched her arms over her head and yawned. Man, I hated the first day of class. It's always so boring. Weren't you looking forward to it this morning? Something about exciting things happening? Well, yeah, but it already did. You met Jontron, didn't you? 
Now you've got nothing left to look forward to. She sighed. And I was hoping to see Jared before class, too. She slouched and fell across the front of my desk. It seemed like this would be happening a lot. Is Jared really that hot? Yes. Mai's head snapped back up, her eyes flashing. What did you say? I, uh... If you stare directly at too hot... If you stare directly at him for too long, your nose will melt off. I've seen it happen. What? Anyways, let's head to lunch. I'm super hungry. Oh. I looked at my backpack. It held up well throughout class, but I worried if I didn't take some of my stuff out now, it might do some permanent damage to it. Especially with Satch's book in there. I couldn't exactly afford a new backpack. I need to put something in my locker first. But if we don't go now, they'll run out of sesame seed buns! Oh. That's okay. I'll just go on ahead. Come find me, okay? Alright. I was so lucky to have someone like her as my roommate. Quick as I could, I went to my locker and shoved the book inside. As good of a book as it was, I was definitely happier that I had my around so I didn't have to read it. Without her, who knew what I'd do with myself? Especially with PBG staring at me like that. Maybe I could ask her what was up with him when I met her at the cafeteria? It might just be the way that he was. Cheered, I headed for the cafeteria. I carried my melon bread through the minefield of people, searching for the now familiar sight of Mai's red hair. Where is she? I couldn't see her anywhere, and there was almost no empty seats. All around me, students circled each other, laughing and joking, sharing bites of food and spilling the coughs for sodas. Suddenly, I felt very obvious and very alone. Isn't there anywhere I can sit? Just then, I spotted a table at the front of the room. A lone boy sat at it, stabbing his getty with the vigor of a Roman general. He was having a hard time with it. I moved closer to him, working up the courage to ask to sit with him. Well, no wonder. He was eating his spaghetti with a spoon. Wait a second. This guy was in my class, wasn't he? I saw him that morning in front of the room. And he was wearing a jacket that was just like the normal cloop. The normal cloops? The normal boots clubs, but different. A golden gray jacket with an 8-bit block on the front. Was he a member of another club? Or maybe he was friends with them. Oh, Mai! Mai appeared between me and the boy who glanced up at us before returning to his spaghetti. Thank goodness I found you! I find it. I, I find it. I saved a table for you in the back. Ugh, God, words are hard. I don't know what's going on. <clears throat> oh! I looked at the boy and then back at Mai. Come on! She grabbed my shoulder rather forcefully and pushed me in the back of the room. Hey, what's wrong? <laughs> You are so lucky I got here when I did. That kid is brutal, Moose. His real name's Ian. He's from the Hidden Block Club. The Hidden Block Club? Hmm. Yeah, the rival club of normal boots. He's really weird. I mean... She looked around her to make sure no one was listening in, but we were completely alone in our little corner of the cafeteria. He speaks in comic sans. <gasps> Whoa. Yeah, it'd be better to stay away from him. Especially since you're already gotten, you've already gotten to know some of the normal boots guys. What are you talking about? I only met John today. Uh -huh. Ha ha, yeah, right. I saw the way PBG was staring at you. He totally likes you. Really? Is that what you thought it was? Either Mai was blind or she had... Excuse me? Or she had a serious case of wishful thinking. Oh, totally. It was so cute. Like my favorite manga. You meet in high school, fall in love, and then go off and fight aliens together. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. Have some faith in yourself. That's totally happening. Um. So now that you're good in with you're good in you're in good with PG, can you introduce me to Jared? Oh, was that what she was getting at? A hot flush of doubt sees me. Is it possible that Maya only liked me because she thought I would knew the normal boots guys? That couldn't be the case though. She was so nice. So looking at her shining eager face, I couldn't talk myself out of the idea. Uh. I actually thought PBG didn't like me. What? <laughs> Why would you think that? Well, he was glaring at me. Man, you just don't understand. It's a love triangle. A love triangle. Wait, a triangle now? I can see it. Stars practically erupted from her eyes. PBG, I can't. But Hara, I, I love you. <sighs> but my maidenhood. Where are you going with this? I slammed my fork down the table. Maya looked pleased with herself. 
Okay, okay, I'm just kidding. You're really cute when you blush. You almost match your hair. That's not fair at all. I beg to differ. Still, I searched my mind eager to change the subject. That was an impressive scenario. What? No, it wasn't. I just made it up on the spot. My left nervously. Oh, so the girl that was talking to me when we got separated. My told me the story of her past friendship with this girl, like they were eternal arch nemesis. Nemesis. Nemesis? I'm a nema. I'm a nema nemony. A nemony! Apparently they had some bad blood. I nodded, choosing to take the time to relax. Before I knew it, we were, we were finished eating. We got up and tossed our trays together. As I headed towards the door, though, Mai hesitated. Um, hey, I forgot something back at the dorm. Oh, need help? No, no, I'm totally okay. I'm just gonna go get it. I'll see you later, though. Okay? See you later. Okay, I'll see you in class. I waved and Mai sprinted off in the direction of the dorms. Alone again, I crossed my arms and headed back to hop, 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 adop, bop, poppy hall. Large groups of seven or eight people were laying out in the sun, playing catch and eating lunch on the lawn. It looked like it looked fun to have so many friends like that. I smiled. Maybe this school would really. Guys, I have a problem. I can't read. Maybe this new school would really be better than my last. Without students inside of it, Poppy Hall looked a bit like an abandoned hospital. My footsteps echoed as I climbed the, sca the stairs. The stairs to the fourth floor. <laughs> With a sigh, I opened my locker and pulled out the book stash gave me. It was a good thing I brought it, after all. I stepped into the classroom and saw a flash of movement by the window. A boy sat on the windowsill, and he jerked up when I came in. He was silhouetted by the afternoon sunshine, so I couldn't quite tell who he was. Hello, I'm sorry, did I bother you? The boy stood and shook his head and then crossed to a desk on the opposite side of the room. As he passed, I was able to see him clearly. Another normal boots jacket! This guy! He was Shane from Normal Blues Club. How on earth did this keep happening to me? Shane sat down at his desk, fidgeted with his hands a little, and turned to look at me. You're the new girl. I nodded. My name is Hannah. It's nice to meet you. He nodded. Hmm. Shane. Silence filled the space between us. Panic built up inside of me. This was my chance to get in with the Normal Blues Club, and I was blowing it. I walked to my desk and sat down, setting the book on top of it. You, um... Shane looked at me, unsmiling. You're part of the Normal Boots Club. Yes, I am. Why? He spoke as if it was a challenge, almost glaring at me. I, uh, I just saw your jacket, so... I trailed off. The jackets are really cool. Okay. Yeah, they are. Silence again. He seemed skeptical, as if he expected me to crawl out of my skin and reveal myself to be a large amphib am amphibious reptile. I had to do something. Who knew when another chance like this would come? But Shane did not seem friendly. In fact, he seemed downright suspicious. Surely he wasn't trying. It wasn't on to me already. Maybe it was better not to risk it. And with this decision, I'm actually going to wrap up this episode, guys. It's been great fun playing this with you guys. And uh, if you liked what you saw, please comment, like it, subscribe. You know the drill. I will see you later. Bye.